Okay, so here is a problem. I believe this is also on your web assigned. Um, it says an electron moving parallel to the x-axis has uh, an initial speed of 3.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second at the origin. So let's see if this is the x-axis here. Um, here is the origin. And um, it's an electron, right? So it's got an electron. It's got a speed at this moment. I'll call it V initial. Uh, it's got a speed of 3.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second and at x equals 2 uh, let's say this is x equals 2 here at 2 centimeters uh, it's got a speed of it's reduced it's slowed down right it's slowed down uh, to a speed of i'll call it v final um that's 1.76 times 10 to the 5 meters per second okay and the question is i uh, calculate the electric potential difference between the origin and this point. So, so part A, they're asking us for what is the delta V? That means potential at two centimeters minus the potential at the origin, okay? So, so when you see this, um, probably the first thing that comes to mind is it has kinetic energy, but it's slowed down. So it has lost kinetic energy, which means it must have gained potential energy in the process, right? So conservation of energy, if, if conservation of energy was the first thing that came to your mind, uh, you're on the right track, okay? Now, also, I want to have a better idea. Uh, if I have to slow down an electron, which way should the electric field be, right? So, so remember, um, you, it needs a force opposite to the direction of motion in order for it to slow down. So it's the force would be to the left, but because it's a negative charge, right? The Q that we are talking about, it's a negative charge. Uh, that means the electric field must be opposite to the force, which means electric field also must be in the positive X direction so that the force can be opposite it will be in the negative x direction you see so so the acceleration on the on the charge is in the opposite direction right so there's actually two ways you can do this problem i'll show you both ways uh, but the first one which is always my preferred way is to use energy whenever possible right so so if i use conservation of energy here i you know delta k plus delta u is equal to zero uh, delta K is final minus the initial, so it's one half m v final squared minus one half m v initial squared, and it's an electron, so this is mass of an electron, right? And that's equal to uh, negative delta u, right? So that's equal to negative delta u, but delta u is q times delta v, right? So so this will be negative q times delta v but the q here is an electron so q is actually negative e right so it's an electron has a negative charge so so if i substitute that in here negative of negative e so that will just give me a positive e times delta v and what they want me to calculate is the electric potential difference so i can rewrite this as delta v is equal to one half uh, mass me is same in both of them um, so i'll factor it out uh, v final squared minus v initial squared and then i have to divide by the charge e right to get the delta v so now it's just a question of substituting everything right so if i do that um, i have mass of the electron 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms and then I have my V final squared minus V initial squared uh, that is final is 1.76 times 10 to the 5 uh, meters per second I have to square that minus the initial velocity which is 3.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second squared and then you divide it by the charge 
electronic charge which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs right so that's what i have and if you substitute all the well we have already substituted if you if you put it all in your calculator um, and if you do it uh, i did it just recently so i'll read off from here that's negative 34.7 8.6 volts, right? uh, but three significant figures, uh, I'll round it to negative 34.8 volts. Okay, that's the delta V, and delta V, remember, it's always final minus the initial, so, so we can say this is... Um, v at 2 minus v at 0 you know so if i just say v final minus v initial you know that's that's a negative value and let's quickly check to make sure it it makes sense right so if i uh, if i try to look at uh, you know the electric field is to the right uh, remember electric field points from higher to lower potential so so the equipotential here will be at a higher potential compared to this. So if I call this, um, you know, this is the V initial here and this is the V final, this is the volts, by the way, not the velocity, right? Then a VI is bigger than VF, right? So when, when they say which point is at the higher potential, you know, uh, in part B of this, uh, they're saying which point is at the higher potential, then you say, well, part B, you know, um, origin, is at higher potential. So, so if the answer is all we need, we are done here, right? But if you are wondering, could could I have done this with chapter twenty three ideas with kinematics? Sure, you certainly could have. Uh, you know, especially because the electric field is constant, acceleration would be constant, and uh, that should also give you uh, give you the same expression, right? So let's try it. Uh, from that point of view, right? So if I um, if I try to do it using uh, using kinematics and f equals ma, so use f equals ma right? and kinematics, you can get the same answer. I want to show you that. Um, so so in that case, I would try to first. Um, with the velocities, I can use kinematics and I could figure out the acceleration, right? So um, if I use one of the kinematic equations, Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2 times A times delta x, right? So then this will give me uh, the acceleration A will be Vf squared minus Vi squared divided by 2 times delta x. And delta x is your 2 centimeters, right? And you can substitute and you can get a number if you want, but I'll, I'll just keep it in terms of symbols for now, just to show you that we get the same answer, right? So if I now look at, okay, I've got the acceleration, which means I can get the force on it, right? So net force is mass times acceleration, right? Uh, and also, you, you'll see that the acceleration will come out to be negative because Vf is smaller than Vi, so this will be negative, right? And um, this force here, the net force uh, on the electron, that's just the Fe, that's equal to Me times the acceleration, you see? So, um, so why am I doing this? Well, I'm trying to do this because I want to eventually get um delta v from it okay so okay so so how am i going to get delta v from here yeah let's see so fe is q times the electric field right and that's equal to mass of the electron times the acceleration and then i'm going to use the expression uh, that delta v is equal to negative ed right Sorry. negative ed uh, in this case, d is nothing but your delta x, right? So, so if I substitute all that here, a q is the electron, negative e, and uh, the electric field e, I'm going to write it as delta v divided by a delta x, 
with the minus sign, minus sign. And that's equal to mass of the electron times the acceleration. And you can see Vf squared minus Vi squared divided by 2 times delta x. You see how the delta x gets cancelled. You see? That's why we didn't really use that 2 centimeters information there in the in the first part here. If we try to use this, we could have gotten an expression here, but eventually that would have gone away uh, over here. And minus and minus, that's plus. So with all this, you know, you get your delta V. That's what we want. So your delta V is equal to um, 1 half. And then you have Me Vf squared minus Vi squared divided by right um divided by yeah, the negative went away so you're just left with e you see exactly the same as what you had over here right exact same thing uh, as you had over here so if you substitute all the numbers you will get the exact same answer uh, that is negative 34.8 volts so it's up to you which one you find it uh, easier. I just feel like any time I can get away with using conservation of energy, I feel like energy is so much more elegant and we can get the job done very quickly. But uh, I've seen some students who are a lot more comfortable with kinematics and, um, you know, with the forces and the acceleration and so on. So you're most welcome to use this as well unless they force you to use the energy approach.